The mind of someone with ADHD is a chaotic place to be. Of the increasing number of individuals being diagnosed each year, it seems that a majority of these individuals are in a daily struggle with their so-called disorder. But equally, others seem to flourish, living amazing lives at the top of their chosen fields, despite being marked with a label that should be detrimental in a modern, focus and attention-driven culture. Underdogs by any description, they transform their weaknesses into positives, beating all odds in the face of adversity. The underdog plays a key role in religion, cinema, books, and in human history. Why are we so intensely intrigued by the overcoming of hardship? And why do we glorify the long struggle for victory? The underdog is scary, unpredictable, often using guerrilla tactics and creative methods to slowly chip away at their opposition, sometimes obsessively. But their energy never fails to charm a soft spot in our hearts. Join me as we learn about the modern day underdog. This video is made for and made by enthusiastic laymen. We'll be asking questions about why many with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder come out on top with superhero status. My name's Lewis McSporran, and this video is for your eyes only. It's now determined by ADHD experts that those with the disorder are more sensitive people. They are at physical risk, often to a statistically higher likelihood of having allergies, and also tend to contract more respiratory infections. In addition, a classic emotional sensitivity is thought to affect those with ADHD. They feel the effect of their surroundings deeply, and have difficulty digesting critical feedback in a constructive manner. You can imagine a young boy being driven back from a school football tournament by his dad one Saturday after discussing the score of the game, win or lose, Anything his father mentions about the boy's performance will be taken as an attack. The boy is in a constant internal battle of comparison with his peers, and although that he may know his dad's feedback is true and that he's just trying to help, the boy can't help but take it to heart. A growing and seemingly uncontrollable wave of emotions engulf the boy and he freezes in paralysis. He stays quiet, doing everything in his physical power to not show the feelings that have consumed him. The boy doesn't understand why these internal afflictions are present, and he knows himself that these feelings are an overreaction. However, he has no choice. He has no control. He silently sees out the rest of the car journey, and on returning home, makes for the front door, and next, for his bedroom. Both his father and the sensitive son are left perplexed by his emotional reaction. Although not every sensitive person has ADHD, every person with ADHD is sensitive. The simultaneous vulnerability and connection to their surroundings often allows those with the ADHD to empathize with others who suffer from pain caused by their environment. The thinking patterns used by emotional individuals build vivid imaginations, compelling them to put themselves in other people's shoes, experiencing the world through their eyes. It is often reported that individuals with ADHD are compelled to help other, more vulnerable people. They can easily imagine how they would feel facing a particular injustice against another person and impulsively act to put an end to it. This urge is what drives the noble police officer, the anti-corruption journalist, and usually the underdog. It's the imagination sensitive people possess that sparks the creativity associated with people diagnosed with ADHD. Creative imagination and sensitivity are two sides of the same coin. Sensitive people draw on their inner feelings and reflections for creative imagination. The flowing ADHD mind is in constant motion, jumping from one idea to the next. Having an attention deficit and a tendency to become distracted opens it up to more ideas. A wandering mind, by definition, stumbles across unexpected sources of inspiration, and linking these sources together births new ideas. Creativity comes from the clashing of experimentation and impulsivity, testing new ideas and scratching the ever-present itch to create and produce. Motivated creatives have the ability to dive deeply into their imaginative minds to discover inspiration, confronting life's questions with newfound ideas and perspectives. The mathematician Alan Turing once said, those who can imagine anything can create the impossible. Einstein, Galileo, Da Vinci, Edison, Mozart, Tesla, Franklin, Disney, Goldberg, Carnegie, Phelps, Hilton, Biles, even Will.i.am, all were thought to have had or have 
ADHD and all have the ability to see and hear things that no one else was able to. Whether it be whispered inspiration in their ear late at night or imagining every single thing that could go wrong in the pool on a bad day and training exactly how to overcome them and still win. It's all creativity derived from a natural sensitivity. Both imagination and sensitivity, if backed by the right tools to use them, by all intents and purposes, are superpowers. Many centuries ago, the hunter-gatherer most highly attuned to their environment would be a survivor. Distracted by a sound in the dark night, they might recheck their perimeter of their camp and may impulsively pursue a potential threat to their tribe. By using only animal scat and spoor, a hunter-gatherer would be able to clearly visualize the path taken by their prey during a hunt, using their imaginations to feed their families and keep their groups safe. Western cultures and education systems very much struggle to deal with what they cannot control or quantify. What is difficult to measure is difficult to value. Creativity is impossible to gauge accurately by time or effort, but these are the two metrics we predominantly use to trade for monetary value. Everyone is trained to work as hard as they can for as much time as possible. Consequently, a lot of value is placed on the grind towards success sometimes even more so than the final result. We see the work hard mantras of celebrities and public figures spread across social media. And although this is a sure method of success in monetary value, it has two branches of downfall for the creative individual with ADHD. Number one, if the culture you exist in pegs your personal value to the success and achievement that comes as a result from working hard at school or at work, and you're unable to concentrate at will and prone to distraction, the outcome won't be positive on your self-worth. And number two, if working hard becomes your goal, you may plunge yourself into an uphill battle to try and achieve success, ignoring your true skill of creativity and an openness to inspiration that may come easily to you. You might well suppress your natural talent and hunt of hard work. After all, workaholism is an addiction. Creativity is a gift that should be protected, a hunger to build, an impulse to design and a longing to learn should be pursued. Those with ADHD seem to view the world through a different lens. They can think outside the box and their distractibility could be seen as more of a curiosity. They're fantastic at working with bigger picture ideas and projects. Their mind casts itself from one idea to the next, connecting different emotional experiences and learnings. If those without ADHD have the ability to focus their attention like the blinkered vision of a racehorse, someone with ADHD is like the wild horse in the hills of the Pyrenees, exploring uncensored panoramic vision. Interestingly, however, despite their poverty of focus, those with ADHD do experience what can only be described as a hyper-focus when engaging with their favorite subjects. This contradictory trait allows deep and meaningful work to be done if the individual is sufficiently motivated. The hyper-focus state, sometimes known as flow, leaves any hunger, emotional setback, and time perception at the door, revealing a skill that you can neither teach or buy. Motivation is key, but the objective should not be how to motivate someone with ADHD, but how to help them find their own intrinsic motivation, aiding their journey towards discovering their passions. The right outlet for this hyper-interest can come in all different shapes and sizes, from starting a business, to researching and writing a book, to building a house and planting a garden. There is no hierarchical structure prioritizing one interest over another. They're all relative to the individual. Fortunately, due to only really being able to engage fully in subjects that interest them, people with ADHD don't often have a hard time discerning which activities grab their profound attention. This hyperfocus is a tool used by all of the names we previously met in this journey and many more like them. It's truly a brilliant skill if used correctly. In Malcolm Gladwell's book called David and Goliath, Underdogs, Misfits and the Art of Battling Giants, he writes the following. We have, I think, a very rigid and limited definition of what an advantage is. We think of things as helpful that actually aren't and think of other things as unhelpful that in reality leave us stronger and wiser. The truth is that any passion can become an addiction. It's merely a matter of who's in control. Even underdogs need balance in their life. Hyper-focus balanced with big picture thinking and a drive to be successful balanced with an unconditional self-worth. But if you're out of balance, how do you even the scales? 
How does someone with ADHD gain the best of their natural abilities while avoiding potential overwhelm? Some say the answer is medication. Our superhero underdog is more often than not prescribed drugs to help cope once diagnosed with ADHD. Is this the answer or are we making the problem worse? Join me in my next video where we look at the medication options for ADHD and weigh up their positive as well as negative effects. My name's Lewis McSporran. And if you've enjoyed our time together here, please subscribe to my Brilliant Brain channel. Hit like, and I'll see you shortly in the next video, all about ADHD medications. I'll see you there.